Hello, welcome to Pep About TV. The news in brief. First, the headlines. Fuel subsidy will end in June 2023, says Finance Minister. Obaseki presents 320.35 billion naira in 2023 budget to Edo State House of Assembly. No going back on the use of beavers, IREF, says INEC chairman. Federal government arranged 16 foreigners, detains vessel. And 11-year-old girl allegedly tortured to death in Joss. Now the details. My name is Omo Ikhayere. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, has said that petroleum subsidy will be completely phased out by June 2023. The minister stated this in Abuja during a press conference to mark the end of 28 National Economic Summit, the reports. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, while addressing journalists said, that removal of first subsidy is part of the federal government's medium-term plan in 2023. According to her, we have already engaged with the states and public before it was approved as part of the medium-term plan. We have to do it by systematically informing the citizens about the size and quantum of the first subsidy and also to educate them about the opportunity cost of what the government is unable to achieve because of first subsidy. She, however, noted that the first subsidy, in addition to budget deficits, is putting enormous pressure on the physical elements of the economy. The plan is, by 2023, we must have completely exited subsidy, and it has to be a gradual process, she said. Fave or Percy Idubo, PAPE about television. The Edo State Governor, Mr. Golden Obaseki, has presented 320 0.35 billion naira budget to the Edo State House of Assembly for the 2023 fiscal year representing 44.3% increase from the 222 billion naira budgeted for the year 2022. Favorite person Dubo completes the story. Governor Godwin Obaseki, who presented the budget to the Assembly sitting at the Anthony Inahoro Assembly Complex in Benin City, said the budget comprises of $192 billion for capital and $127.5 billion for recurrent expenditure. According to the governor, the document, Christian Budget of Resilience and Transformation, is informed by the need to build a resilient and sustainable foundation for the reforms, initiatives, and programs embarked upon by the state in the last six years. Abaseki said, our strategic goal is to utilize manufacturing, technology, agriculture, arts, culture, and entertainment as a catalyst to promote sustained investment across all sectors of the economy. He noted that the total projected revenue for 2023 is 300 billion, consisting of 144.26 billion statutory allocation made up of value-added tasks of 41.2 billion, capital receipts of 46.1 billion, internally generated revenue of 60.4 billion and 4 billion from grants, among others. Budget estimates for the year 2023. Mr. Speaker and Honorable Members, our budget size for the year 2023 fiscal year is 320.35 billion naira. This year, the budget is made up of 192 billion for capital and 127 billion for recurrent expenditure. While the budgetary figures may look high, on an inflation-adjusted basis, it is slightly higher than that of 2022. The revenue estimates for the budget is based on a $70 per barrel benchmark for crude oil, an average daily production of 1.69 million barrels per day, as well as an increase of internally generated revenues to $60.4 billion. The governor added that the balance will be sourced from development financing and financial institutions, while noting that education, health, among others, will take priority. Favor Percy Idubo reporting. And now on INEC issues, 
The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has reiterated its resolve to the, on the use of the Biomoda Voter Accreditation System, BIVAS, and the INEC Resolve Viewing Portals, IREF, for the 2023 general elections. Favor has a report. Addressing the fears and speculations emanating from some quarters, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu noted, I have said repeatedly that the commission's allegiance is to Nigeria. Our loyalty is to Nigerians who want free, fair, credible, and verifiable elections supported by technology, which guarantees transparent accreditation and upload of polling unit results for citizens to view in real time on election day. Yakub noted that it was for reasons listed above that the Biomoda Voter Accreditation System, BIVAS, and the INEC Resort Viewing Portal were introduced. He emphasized that there is no going back on the deployment of BIVAS and IRE for 2023 general elections. Favor for Percy Idubo, PEP about television. And from River State comes this report that a federal high court sitting in Port Harcourt, River State, has arraigned 16 foreigners for offenses bordering on conspiracy, stealing, attempts to deal in crude oil, and false pretenses. Favor of Percy Dubo reports that the foreigner nationals were caught on board a vessel M1 Heroic Edu. The reports. According to the charges, the foreigners had in August 2022 at the Akbo oil field in River State conspired among themselves and committed maritime offenses. The accused pleaded not guilty to the charges said to contravene Section 10 of Suppression of Piracy and Other Maritime Offenses Act 2019. After listening to the application of the prosecutors on the amended charges, the trial judge, Justice Turak, after listening to the applications of the prosecutors and amended charges, the trial judge, Justice Turaki Mohammed, ordered that the accused be remanded to enable 10 other suspects remaining to be brought to the court to take their place. Favor Percy Edubo reporting. Away from River States to Joss comes this report that an 11 year old girl identified as Margaret Joshua has died in Jaws as a result of alleged physical abuse by her guardian, Mrs. Inamaka Wanchuku. Fever reports that Mrs. Inamaka is a microbiologist who works with one of the research institutes in Vaughan, Jaws, South Local Government Area of Plateau State. Her reports. The victim, who is said to be from KB State and was fleeing from the insecurity in her community, was brought to just to serve in Wachiku's house. The alleged abuser, a mother of two, who was accused of not enrolling the victim in any school in the over one year that the girl has spent with her, was said to engage in daily beating of the girl until she died as a result of the constant assault. It was revealed that after a recent beating by the abuser, the girl was forced to sit on a container of hot water which got her burnt and she died in the hospital afterwards. The Plate State Coordinator of the National Human Rights Commission, Mrs. Grace Pam, said her office is following up on the case. Favor for Percy Idubo, paper about television. And that report from Joss brings to an end the site of our bulletin from PEP about TV. My name is Omo Ikari. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.